this a different version of what you're talking about the modern human thinks if i have this thing a car or whatever the thing is a nicer job a better whatever i'll be happy mm -hmm. uh what you're saying is if i have an immediacy if i'm con more connected to nature if i move to alaska if i become a hunter i'll be happy but both of these things have within them the idea that i need some other thing to be happy whereas the what i keep hearing and what i subscribe to is that to be happy you have to be in the present moment wherever you are whatever situation you're in whatever is going on whether you're in an office uh, in a job you don't like in a marriage you don't like with a bunch of kids that you don't like instead of fleeing from that by planning some fantasy of becoming a tattooist or a potter the real way out is to allow yourself to be fully in the experience of what's happening right now and that that thing itself just doing that and maybe that is what happens when you're in nature is you're more in the present moment yeah, but that makes way more sense when you're in nature because if you're working in an insurance company and you're just going over clients claims day in and day out it's super hard to be in a joyful moment it's super hard to be there when you really want to get out of there and make music well, like you have, a, a, you have songs and ideas in your head you want to put them to wax but your fucking kids need formula well it's not it's not joy the thing is it's like the 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 idea is sure for sure but this is where you're at right now that's it right that's where you are you're not in a situation where you're going to start a band and you're not in a situation where you're going to become a potter right now could be in the future but the trick is that even though you're not in the fucking anirondacks hunting mm. and you're not fishing even though you're wherever you're at right now get into that place let yourself feel and it's not about happiness it's certainly not about joy or bliss or anything like that mm -hmm. you're not feeling joy and bliss you're feeling a kind of claustrophobic horror at the concept that what the situation you're in right now is going to continue forever and so your mind is fabricated an escape route which is this thing or that thing whatever it may be but the true uh the true situation is that until you train yourself to be in the present moment it doesn't matter where you are. You're dead. You're not alive. You're not, it doesn't matter. You have to train yourself to get in the moment. Then once you're in the moment, then start making the moves. Okay, now you say in the moment. Like, how do you address that? Like, what, when you're thinking about you being in the moment, like your own personal experience, yeah. like what, do you, what do you do to try to achieve that sort of centered feeling? It's, well, it's the practice of, of mindfulness. Right. So it's the idea of, you know, what it's... I will notice from time to time when I'm lucky that I've been carried away by my thoughts. Like that fucking thing you were saying about laying in bed, you can generate more stress chemicals. I'll recognize like, holy shit, I've been in a vortex of thinking for the last two days. I've been caught in this like endless recurring series of worries or scenarios or whatever it may be, or things I need to do or things I, uh, I just did. And, and, suddenly I realized I haven't been here at all, at all. I've just been caught up in what's called in your head. You're caught up in the thought pattern. So the, uh, the practice is, uh, and this is something like, you know, uh, uh, Jack Cornfield talks about how the guy who taught in meditation, Ajahn Chah, uh, uh, was saying to him that um, uh, if one of his students was saying, I am too busy to meditate. I'm too busy to meditate. I don't have time to do that. And his response was, are you too busy to breathe? Are you too busy to breathe? You can breathe, right? That's all you need to do. All you need is your breath. And no matter where you are, what you're doing, where you're at, you can begin to put your attention away from the incredible array of worries that you have, incredible array of fantasies that you have, incredible arrays of if this had happened, I'd be happier. Or if, if, if I could do this, I'll be a better person. And just bring it to your breath in and out in through the nose out through the nose and then it's not going to stop these fucking thoughts but instead of you being in controlled by them and caught up in them i mean talk about looking at your fucking cell phone get rid of cell phones people are still looking at cell phones it's just their various worries and things that they're constantly ruminating over it's another form of the cell phone you're fixating on these endless recurring worries so you bring it to the breath the worries emerge the happiness whatever it is is there but 
it's not you. You're not identifying with it anymore. You're not identifying with the specific emotional state, the specific intellectual state, the specific thing anymore. You're just observing and watching. And that thing, that consciousness, the more you become that, the more you will find yourself experiencing what you were talking about, these rare moments of peace, these moments of like, whoa, holy shit, regardless of what's happening around me, I'm still centered, untouched, unfreaked out, unanxious. I'm just watching. So that's the that's the uh, the concept, and and it's a very hopeful concept because some people do not have access to the kind of zoo you're talking about. Prisoners, for example, people who are incarcerated right now, they don't get to get out of that system. So they have to find a way in the midst of all of that negative phenomena to allow themselves to experience the same kind of peace or tranquility that you are experiencing with your friends in front of that campfire. And that is why the concept of cultivation is so important in Buddhism, which is the idea that these experiences, which in a, a various, many different world religions say at their root, what is so wonderful about them is love. That feeling of love, which is also compared to the feeling of coming home, being at home, finding your home, coming back home. It's all the same because the feeling of what is the feeling of being at home? It's a feeling of being at, what did you call it? A situation of acceptance and love. It's that feeling of being mm. sa truly safe, right. not safe because of the government, but safe because you're surrounded by people who love you and you're loving them and you know that you could be taken care of. The concept is that feeling can be cultivated mm. and that cultivation starts with some form of the practice of this.